I bet flat earthers out there really love this movie. Gora, released in 2009 and is directed by Alejandro Amenabar, who's behind such films like The Others, The Sea Inside, and While at War. And this film is starring Rachel Weisz, Oscar Isaac, and Max Mihella. The film takes place in the late 4th century Roman Empire in Egypt. Alexandria, to be more exact. And the film focuses on Greek philosopher Hypatia, who is a teacher at the Platonic School, where she teaches and educates future leaders. However, Alexandria is thrown in into just tons of turmoil with a lot of hatred happening between science and religion, and then between religion and religion, and then between religion, religion, religion. Just a lot of religions hating on each other, which has not really changed that much. And so we see a lot of debate and fights between so-called pagan rituals with the Egyptian gods, the Jewish religion, and the rise to power of Christianity. It's basically a bunch of people saying, hey, I believe in, in this one thing, and this one thing is better than your one thing that you believe in. Yeah, and I'm right, because the one thing that I believe in tells me that if I believe in him, I'm right. And because you don't believe in the one thing that I believe that what I told was supposed to believe in, you're, you're wrong. So there. And that is basically the religious community in a nutshell. And I don't mean to offend anyone, I'm just having a little fun here. I grew up very religious, actually. My my goal in life when I was on, in high school was to become a minister. I grew up in the Christian faith. But then just getting older, going to college, and just seeing, at least in my experience, the hypocrisy of the church and how it's run and how it teaches one thing and yet does another, and just the hypocrisy with that. I, I couldn't take it. And I, I still see that hypocrisy today. I mean, we're all hypocrites. I'll be the first to admit that. But when it came to religion, that's just something that just turned me off to it. And I've never gone back and I don't label myself in any type of religion. I'm not going to fault you if you do. That is wonderful. A lot of people get a lot of, of power and morality from being religious in whatever religion that you believe in. What upsets me is that when I say that I'm a happy person by not really believing in one religion, just believing that, hey, there's all these religions and they make everyone good as long as you're not hurting anyone, awesome. When I say that to people of a certain religious faith, and my experience has always been Christians, if I say that to them, they go, oh, well, because you don't believe in my Lord and Savior, I guess you're just going to go to hell. And they do it with a smile on their face. Why? Why? Why Why would you do that? And it's not just one person. I've had this happen multiple times to me. It's to the point where I'm just like, I don't, I don't talk religion anymore. Because what's, what's the point? And I don't want to belong to any specific religion. What is the point? I guess if you truly want to know what my mindset is on the whole religion idea and the whole religion aspect, watch the, the, the super best friends episode of South Park where all of the religious figures are at like the Hall of Justice and they're like Power Rangers and part of like a Justice League. That's kind of how I picture religion and, and everyone who's involved. At least that's how I hope it is. Moses is Zordon. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. But enough about me. Let's talk about the movie Agora. Now, I am a theater professor, and during my intro to theater classes, I do like to go back to the Greeks because that's where really organized theatrical productions really got its start was in the Greek time. And so we talk about different festivals that would happen. And we always talked about City Dionysia, where the Statue of Dionysus would be walked and paraded through the Agora, which is the, the meeting place or the marketplace. So when I saw the title of this movie, I was like, ha ha, I know what that is. I'm smart. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect with this movie. Uh, looking at the Rotten Tomatoes score, I think it's around like 56 around the 50% rage, which is typically not not good. It's actually very divisive, I guess. But I gotta say, I was actually pretty happy and, and pretty impressed with what I saw. I never knew the name Hapashia, I never knew who she was or that she was an actual, a real person. As I'm watching this, I'm like, was was this just a role that was created for Rachel Weiss to, to play? I, I'm not sure, but of course, looking and researching for this review, yes, she was a real live person. We know that she was an astronomer and really looked at 
the planets and star patterns and the Earth's relationship to the sun. However, due to a rising religious organization around this time, when you start throwing some fantastical philosophical ideas out there that contradict what your religion teaches, well, you're typically labeled as a witch, and we want to burn you. But only if you weigh the same as a duck. Oh, and they start throwing out the W word. I was like, oh god. We're getting, we're getting some Monty Python shit here. How do you know she's a witch? Oh, she looks like one. She's got a wart. But this movie does not play out those scenes as as playful and as comedic as Monty Python and the Holy Grail. As a matter of fact, that's probably the biggest turnoff that I had from this movie is that it's very very melodramatic, and I think it takes itself a little too seriously. Like, I don't think there's any levity at all in this movie. I think there's like one line maybe that Oscar Isaac has, and of course that's who he is. He's a great dramatic actor, but he's perfect at throwing in like a one-liner here and there. Like, do I talk first? Or do you talk first? How do we do this? But other than that one line, this movie is, is very, very serious, and Maybe I wasn't prepared for that, maybe I wasn't in the mood for that, but it was kind of a big turnoff for me. And it's only emphasized by a lot of dramatic, uh, dramatic zooms and dramatic focuses on the camera. We have a character who's conflicted between religion and serving his master, and he's doing all these dramatic breaths and looking off into the distance dramatically. <laughs> And the music is swelling. Oh, it's so dramatic. I guess I would have just liked to have seen a little bit more release and a little bit more of a breath with this movie of, okay, <sighs> let's relax. Just moments in the pacing and moments in the script where the audience can tell that the story itself, and it also gives the audience time for itself too, to kind of just go, okay, reset next act. Like, I've never seen someone be so dramatic and so excited about an ellipse before. It's an ellipse! <sighs> and then everyone else who looks at the ellipse looks at it and goes, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen before in my life. Uh. I think I'm being a little over the top with it too, but it's, it's really how this movie played out. I'll give this movie credit though where it's due. The score of this film is magnificent. I love this score. Dario Marianelli. Wow. This is, this is gorgeous. I want to download it right now and just listen to it on a loop. It is breathtaking. I, I love it. But I could listen to this score all day. It is the, the, the best thing about this movie, and it's one of the best scores I've ever heard. I also like how it shows the hypocrisy of not only just religion, but also with science. Does it paint certain religions in this movie a little bit more darker and a little bit more evil than others? Yeah, sure. Does it favor science and philosophy more so over religion? Yeah, I mean, we get that, but it does a good job of showing that, hey, if you have a warped view in any of these fields, it's a recipe for disaster. With Christianity, do you believe the exact word that is written down, or do you believe kind of in the morality teachings of that religion? And it's the same thing that goes with Judaism. And then with science, with philosophy, with astronomy, when you're trying to figure something out, or you're, you have a theory and you're trying to, to, to prove it, if your mindset is so narrowed on one specific thing, it's gonna throw off everything. Rachel Weisz's character is so focused on the circle and how the shape of a circle is just so perfect that you can't deviate from it. But then when we finally get to the ellipses scene, and all of a sudden we go, oh, that's probably how it's done. That makes more sense. I don't know, it was all sciencey sciencey, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'm just going with you. you. You're good. I don't, I don't know the concepts of what you're talking about, but it sounds good. And then, of course, we see the conflict between the written word and then the, the spiritual word of, of God and of Jesus with Christianity. So I like how it shows that both sides can be hypocritical when you have such a narrow, focused view on whatever, whichever aspect that you're in. I, again, just think that this movie takes itself a little too seriously, and we just need a couple of moments in here for breaths, because these are some pretty heavy ideas that you're throwing out there, and I'm sure a lot of people who watch this movie who are of a certain faith would probably feel, uh, you know, a little offended that you're you're questioning them because wasn't that was the whole situation that was happening back then? This rising religion, this rising religion to power, and oh, if you question it, oh, you're you're offending us, and we're gonna stone you. And we also have Google Maps in this movie which was just so weird and jarring. And I'm sorry, it just, it felt like it did not belong 
To me, at least. It didn't belong at all. Here is the Earth, and we are going to zoom in. Google Maps style. On a certain address. In Egypt. In Alexandria. That is just, it totally caught me off guard. But I do think that this film is worth seeing, and Rodrigo, I think it's probably the, the best film that you've recommended for me so far. I'm gonna give Agora three out of five Blu-rays. Not exactly what I had in mind, but not bad. All right, everyone, now because my favorite part of my video is where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next, and we are continuing our recommendation summer with our next recommendation from a longtime subscriber and a longtime fan of mine, Disney 65 fan, you recommended Cinderella. I think you recommended the 2017 live-action version, which I have never seen, but I've heard amazing things about. I grew up on the cartoon Cinderella with the talking mice and the Cinderella, Cinderella. So it's definitely going to be cool to finally check this live-action version out. So thank you, Disney. Disney 65 fan for the recommendation. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, leave a comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter and leave your recommendation there. You can also click on the PayPal donation button on my main page of my YouTube channel. And if you make any size donation at all and you leave your recommendation with your donation, your recommendation could make its way to the front of the line. Again, I'm giving everyone a chance to help me build up this channel so that I can give you a lot more content and a lot better content for all of you loyal people out there and people who really want to support me. So guys, have you seen Agora? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, comment below let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I release Max Movie Review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of Cinderella. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.